Hey, Nick Tockert here with the Historical Fencing Guild. Sorry folks, I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but um, this one isn't quite connected to the Simple Sword, at least not all the way. This is sort of a proto video that will fit in with the curriculum. But my good friend Anthony, he requested a bit of information on synthetic swords. And instead of just simply telling Anthony, yeah, here, this is what I have, I'll do a video so that everybody can get it. Now, his background is SCA, so to start, I'm going to use this as a basis. This is a 30-inch uh, Zen Warrior Armory Heavy Rapier. It's been blued because that's what I do, did to all my steel blades as a way of protecting them. It could use a little work, but it has a lot of flex, and it's very, very light. Uh, I'd say maybe a pound, pound and a half. Lots of flex in the motion. Now, Anthony is coming from an SCA background where there's a lot of transition from you know, standard rapier to what they call cut and thrust. As I recall, his specialty or interest is Spanish. I love me some Spanish, so we're going to talk about some things he can go through. And I'm going to stair step price wise, not necessarily quality wise, but if he wants a light swords uh, simulator that's a little closer to the feel of steel. The cheapest by far you're gonna find is something like this. Um, this is put out by Blades USA. It is a gin. Being that I'm something of a perfectionist, I actually inverted the uh, piece. The cross piece pops right off. If you buy it, it comes like this. This is very, very light. There is maybe maybe six ounces, 10 ounces at the most. Very, very flexible. If, if this has that almost wushu st steel motion, I don't necessarily like it for day to day because against anything other than these, it just isn't stiff enough. It's uh, very, like I said, very, very ridiculously flexible. And I have had one issue where I have another one that is on loan to someone, but the, the pommel broke off. It, the functionality is irrelevant to it, but because it's just a solid piece of, of I want to say, polypropylene. But they, they held up pretty well. There's This has been used for a few years, so I'll bring it into the camera. There's a few chips as with just about anything, and you can just file or smooth that off. But this is going to let you get those nice wrap shots like a heavy would use your Spanish tra oh, here, let me get back in camera where you want that transition to the back of the head kind of thing very handy this you can get for like 25 bucks so if you're just messing around this is not a bad start but like I said it's very 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 flippy uh, next on the price scale and now you're getting it's big jump and I'll admit it, is uh, Rolling Synthetic Swords. Uh, they're originally out of England, might have seen much abuse, but these are very, very novel. They're one of my favorite go-to weapons. This one's got a lot of marks, but they almost always buff out, and they're armor bites, whatever. The blade is extruded nylon. There is a steel core to the bottom third, so the forte is very strong. But it's actually fairly flexible while maintaining a much more rigid, I mean, side to side, if you're going wrong, it doesn't flip. Whereas this guy, it's all over the place. This is almost, almost a foil in lightness. You can't tip it, but it is rounded. And I find that for the most part, unless you catch very specific, the blows deflect. So it, do it absorbs a lot of the shock. If I were saying, if you're going to do anything, this is what a lot of the HEMA guys use. Um, and I really recommend them. They're, they're just a wonderful all-in-all all product. They have two lengths, uh, a 34, and then a two-hander, which I didn't bring out, which is a 38, but it's a, more of a hand and a half. And then you have interchangeable pommels. So it's a whole weapon system. If people are interested, I'll do a whole intro into them. But... As you can see, I'm going to be able to put because I'm on camera. Oh, cool. And lose my glasses. Anyway, the pommels, your grip, 
your cross piece, it all comes off. It's very modular. What I like about these and why I switched to these as sort of the basis for the historical fencing guild is one, you don't have the weather concerns that you have with a rapier. Any of these fighting rapiers that I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I love these. To the day I die, these will be my favorite kinds of weapon. Um, I didn't bring my, my personal blade out tonight. I'll probably bring that out for the next video. But, but these are, uh, they're reliable. They're fairly pretty. They look good for stage, but they don't, um, they don't make the police nearly as nervous. They see a rapier, they think steel, if you're ever at a park or whatever. They see these and they tend to think toy. It's bought, it bought me some leeway a bit at different points. And while mine are seconds, because I bought them when they were still being developed, uh, the, the others don't have this peeling problem that this particular unit has, which I don't know if it even shows up. But this got scuffed off of some armor. And again, it's nylon, so you can just run either a straight razor very carefully or um, a bit of sandpaper and it'll all buff right out. I just practice pretty much constantly, so my stuff is unconstant. Now the next weapon is the, more the top of the line. This, this is from a, a South Coast Swords, which is the American importer to, uh, Black Benser. We call these whites. They are heavy, and I mean, probably three times. Yeah. A little, they're actually weight wise not, not that much heavier, so about twice. But with the steel pommel, steel cross piece that's, that goes through the solid piece of plastic, they are not terribly forgiving. There is no excess movement. But. These are very, 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 very sturdy. These run uh, between 100 bucks, 150. You have to count for euros and all that. But these are going to give you the most pretty uh, and probably the most steel-like of the weapons I've been using lately. Um, I ha There are other weapons you can get um, Cold Steel makes several, but the problem is they have almost no thrust. Uh, and I want, I want to talk about briefly, since I have you and everyone else who's listening here, a really nifty product that Cold Steel put out. In the middle of their, their whole training knives and all that, if you go through their site, you'll find this parry dagger. And I cannot expound the virtues of this particular weapon enough. It's become pretty much one of my favorite go-to sidearms in that it weighs next to nothing. It's balanced perfectly. And for somebody who, as a training tool, in the SCA, at least when I was involved, you, you had to be very careful about being able to bind and catch. So 90 degree angles got very hinky. Since I'm not doing that right now, you know, my rules have changed for the historic offense ago, I can have them. And what's nice about this, if, if you're, you're any, at all a Perry Dagger aficionado, you have your lovely Quillian's Keons. Naturally, you're going to get that uh, side grip. You're gonna get that as a parry. But what I like is this cross section. You see that? This angle is beautiful for a couple reasons. One, obviously it gives you a straight blade to blade bind that can be very nice for controlling other weapons. The other thing is when you're teaching how to use a dagger, and I'm not really going to go into it because I'm going to go heavy into that later. But blade alignment for the windshield washer, because this parry is home for a dagger. So let me grab here, okay? This covers your face pretty well. This covers your body very well, keeping the sword free to make with the stabity death. But getting that angle alignment between being very aggressive and pointed at them and not giving you a defense and being very passive at that 90 degrees sometimes can be tricky. The neat thing about these are, and I, I want to believe that Lynn Thompson planned it this way. I really do, so I'm going to choose to. This cross piece lines right up with your wrist. So when you hold it, sorry, motorcycle going by. You, it automatically trains the eye how to keep that sort of optimal dagger angle. The other nice thing is these are like 14 bucks. 
Now the problem with most weapons, if you here see cold steel, is they're usually very, very, very rigid, which is great when you're dealing with axes and pole arms, and the staff makes me weep inside. I desperately want one. But I'll give this. Woo! This actually is a cold steel sword that I can safely stab someone. And if anyone in cold steel, if Lynn Thompson or any of the developers, I am begging you, make a sword to match this. Make a small sword. Make a full rapier. Just take the blade, maybe widen it a little bit and double the length. I don't care. This is the, the just gorgeous. And I, I want everybody, Anthony, to get that. But in a buyer beware market, Blades USA puts out a sigh, and if you're just glancing, especially in the video, they look exactly the same head-on, or very close. And sometimes the sigh is rather cheaper. The sigh, however, it's an octagonal sigh, and it's really kind of pretty. It's got this little, I don't know if it'll pick up, pattern sort of in the grip and stuff. But there is no flex whatsoever to the sigh. So this, we haven't had one break, but this won't... Um, this is not safe at all for stabbing. This is worse than the old railroad spikes. Uh, sorry, a colloquial term for the flexi daggers. There's no give. So you have to keep that in mind. D you know, buyer beware. But I hope this actually answers some questions and it gets you a brief sort of span. Um, I want to talk retailers for a second because there are two major sword retailers for synthetics outside of Cold Steel, which I love, and Blades USA, which is hit or miss. They're geared more towards the Eastern crowd. And that's uh, Black Fencer Armory, which is an American firm. And uh, I'm, no, I'm sorry, Black Fencer is a European firm. Purple Heart is an American firm. And they're sort of running neck and neck, make, you know, each developing new and different weapons. It's really interesting to see what's coming out because they're of this grade. They're very rigid. They're very sturdy. Um, but South Coast has to come from Europe, so there's shipping issues. And stock is notoriously difficult to get a hold of. So once stuff comes in, it sells out literally in minutes. There are people who stock their site. And that, I assume, is the HEMA guys. Purple Heart, who makes very similar weapons, and I really want them to make a cup hilt. I know Black Fencer uh, has a cup hilt. It's not available in America, to the best of my knowledge. I have this problem with the love of protecting my hands in a cup hilt rapier. But Black Fencer has done custom modification to these in the past. I don't know if they still do, but I, you've seen some of these videos where I'm fighting with a curved sword. I'm not going to get that out today because I'm trying to keep to the subject, but they sell curved, they sell shorter lengths. So they have a really nice about 22 inch cutlass that they were doing for a while. They've since started developing new white daggers for that. Maybe when I get some money with my birthday coming up, I might just acquire some stuff just to show you later. But getting back to it, if I'm in Anthony's boat, what do I want to do? If I'm looking for a weapon to trade with that will keep my lovely rapier from getting dinged up while I, I learn calibration and keep, you know, I don't want notches on these because these do take notches. Uh, I'm going to probably really point toward the middle ground, which is the Rawlings. The, the Rawlings synthetic swords aren't quite as sexy as the whites, and since I do a lot more with a lot more, we pretty much fight somewhere between cut and thrust and heavy. We're armoring up again, we're building back up, a lot of what we do is slower three-quarter work for the videos, or we're just goofing around. But when we're serious, it can get a little aggressive, and we can chew through these a bit. The whites can be a little much for these. But the, the Rawlings are sort of, I'm finding a good middle ground. They're, they're relatively, you can get one for 80 bucks. You can get one cheaper. Watch eBay, watch Amazon, because what's happening is a lot of people are switching from these to these because they're pretty, but I do want to warn, these are all bare metal fittings, so anytime they're outside, if you look at them funny, they're going to spot rust. And this one was out for uh, a practice. This is actually not my weapon. This is my friend Justin Services. I'm in need of one desperately, but like I said, I'm still kind of holding out to get a, a, a cup hill. I'm going to talk more about these in their own video later, but 
I'm hoping that this will answer any questions uh, Anthony has, and anyone else, please, you know, post, comment, like, and as always, support your local Swordmaster. Thank you.